Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our another service of the Word. Today is uh, the first service of um, ordinary time for us, and so we have a brand new service of the Word booklet. The link will be, as always, in the description below. It's got all the worship in there. Just print it out. If you can't print it out, have it on an iPad or something. It's quite easy to follow along. So we'll begin our service beginning on page two, as always. And just let's have a moment of silence as just bring yourselves before the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you during this time of prayer. So we begin on page two. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. We meet in the name of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all your, our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in your goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, from whom all good things come, grant to us, your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may perform the same, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the second letter to Timothy, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Christ by the will of God, for the sake and promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers day and night. For this reason I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day when I am entrusted to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 123, and the response will be, look up to the Lord. Look up to the Lord. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master. Look up to the Lord. As the eyes of a maiden to the hands of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. Look up to the Lord. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. We have had more than enough of contempt. 
Our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease. Look up to the Lord. The Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers, the first married, and when he died left no children, and the second married her and died, leaving no children, and the third likewise. None of the seven left children. Last of all, the woman died. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven have married her. Jesus said to them, Is not this the reason you are wrong, that you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they raise from the from when for when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. The dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not he is God not of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I know if you've been watching uh, these services, I get a little bit riled with Trump, as I'm sure many of you do. He's not even our leader. But what he did this last week actually beggars belief, and that beggars belief quite literally. Using violence, he dispersed a crowd of peaceful protesters, rightly angered by the continual violence and racism across their, that country. And as these people who were peacefully protesting were dispersed with tear gas and violence, Trump marched self-righteously from the White House to have a photo opportunity in front of the Anglican Church nearby, holding a Bible in the air. And it was upside down. Why? Why did he think this was such a good idea? Simply because he's no fool. He is blindfolding millions of churchgoers, churchgoers like you and me, with a show of faith. And it is a false show. Nothing Trump seemingly does actually aligns with the teachings of Jesus. In fact, quite the contrary. Yet, by simply posting a picture of himself with a Bible outside a church that had been damaged, Millions of churchgoers will say he is a good Christian. Let's follow him. Only because he waves a Bible around. I suspect he hasn't read the inside of it. You don't have to do many Google searches to see that Trump's actions speak of someone who is against everything Christianity stands for. More will look at the dangerous delusions of this despot and reject God and Jesus, having seen Trump claiming the righteousness of God in what he does. This picture of opportunity was a profound act of evil. This incident also speaks to, in my mind at least, one of the chief dangers to the Christian in our journey. And that danger is very simply losing sight of God and worshipping that which isn't God. You see, Millions of church-going Americans have lost sight of God and have begun worshipping the man who promises them the world rather than the man who created the world. In our own lives, how easy is it, just ask yourselves, to make our own little objectives or interests, our bodies, our successes, more important than worshipping God? In church, how often does the mission to love the people in, in the community in which we are um, get sucked out by the conflicts that so often happen in churches over the silliest things, over fair stalls or coffee mornings or the music or the placement of pews or whatever else. Because at those times, we have once again stopped worshipping God and are worshipping our own ambitions or our own ideas of what's right for church or whatever it is that distracts our heart. It always surprises me. When I visit a church and they complain that they're not growing, they see no one arrive. 
Yet they are entirely consumed by these tiny little conflicts and cannot see that when those conflicts are the most important thing in a church community, that the worship of God is simply not happy in it happening. You see, the worship of God is not about saying the right words at the right time during a service. They actually, these churches actually can't recognise that God isn't being worshipped in those moments. And it's therefore no surprise that when conflict or self-interest or whatever it is, is the main driver for a church community, that no one comes. And one of the greatest dangers to the Christian is worshipping that which isn't God, simply idolatry. In our gospel reading today, Jesus is asked a ridiculous question by the Sadducees. Now, the Sadducees were a privileged, well-off group in ancient Israel. They were often the ones in charge. They were educated and they, as part of their spirituality, only accepted the authority of the Mosaic laws, those found in the first five books of the Bible. And what you can see in their question they ask of Jesus, this hypothetical question, is that their interest isn't really in worshipping God, but in proving the superiority of their own position of thought. The Sadducees, looking only at the first five books of the Bible, said that as far as they could see, there was no life after death, as there was no indication of that within their limited view of scripture. So how is this bad? Because actually, if you were to read nothing but the five first books of the Bible, although that would be a limited view, it's not necessarily a, a, a bad place or a bad thing to do, I guess. So where have they gone wrong? You see, where they've gone wrong is they were seeking righteousness by not, they were not seeking righteousness by following God, but were trying to find their um, self-righteousness by coming up with this ridiculous schoolyard question about a resurrected wife having seven husbands to prove their own point. Jesus, of course, quickly shows them, with reference to the scripture from those first five books, that they were incredibly wrong. The Sadducees had not realised how little they knew and they had spent their time misplacing their energy away from worshipping the God but to trying to find out all the answers to trying to be the ones who had all the knowledge and they had along that path entirely lost the point of being a disciple and we too are so quick to worship to stop worshipping God and begin making other things God just like the Sadducees did and the worst bit is that we are often just as blind as they are in what we're doing. It makes me feel sorry for the Sadducees and for the people who are awed at that picture of Trump holding a Bible because in my life I recognise times many times when I have been blind to my own idolatry, times when I have made other things, even church things, even good things my God. Never forget that the Sadducees, that the wayward American Christians across the pond and ourselves are all trying to be faithful people, to do the right thing, to live upright lives, but have so often got, gotten lost in our own self-righteousness and our own understanding. In that state, we are often blind to our own position. What are we to do then if we recognise how easy it is to be lost? And how blind we are to realising that we are making gods of things that are not God. Well, in our first reading, Paul, I believe, shows us part of the way we do that. Now, Paul's writing to his disciple, Timothy. And Paul is trying to impart some of the wisdom he's learnt over many years. And so the first thing you notice in that reading is that Paul has commit, um, commits himself to prayer night and day for Timothy. When we pray, we are giving over control of what we want and what we desire. Prayer has to be that open sense of prayer, not where we simply shoot things like a shopping list to God, but something where we are listening as much as we are giving. Some, uh, it's a, prayer needs to be a conversation. That sense of prayer is central to retaining our focus on all of what God wants for us. 
Next in this reading, Paul tells Timothy that to follow his example, he needs to rely on God's power. Our misplaced worship often starts in relying on our own wisdom, as the Sadducees did, or our own ability and our own understanding. How often do you see people criticising how others worship, as if they had the perfect understanding of what it is to be a Christian disciple? Or how often do you see people in our churches criticise other churches for the missions they're doing as if they had a perfect understanding of what it is to carry out mission? How often do we see churches trying to do good under their own steam without relying on God? We need to let go of our own ideas and powers and rely on God to show us the way to provi and provide the power. Could it be that the creator of the universe doesn't require you or me to do stuff but is waiting in the wings to give us the power to do what he wants. But as human beings, it's so hard to let go of that control, isn't it? Finally, Paul reminds Timothy that actually it's all about grace. God, he tells Timothy, called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. We don't have control. We are not especially good people that are rewarded with a relationship with God. Being a Christian isn't like a cosmic knighthood earned for services to being a good person. We didn't do anything to earn righteousness. But God, through his grace and through his purpose, called us. Nothing to do with us. No, it is all God's grace. It's all God's power. It's all God's will. We need to forget that it's anything really to do with us. The only thing we need to do is accept what he wants to do in our lives. What this boils down to is really a question of control. Are we prepared to give control to God through prayer, through relying on his power, not ours, through reminding ourselves that we did nothing to earn our place among his people? The whole Christian journey, when you get down to it, is one that at its core is about letting God be God in our lives. The whole problem with the human race started when Adam and Eve didn't let God be God. The whole journey back to that relationship is where we start letting God be God again. Because only then can we worship God, can we avoid the idols that pop up every day. Ignore Bible-waving idiots. Ignore those who come up with stupid questions. Ignore the temptation to judge others and to be um, empowered in your, under your own steam. All we need to do is to pray, rely on God's power, on his grace and on his purpose. Give God the controls. Because you see, when we do, not only do we find ourselves blessed and truly free, but we bless our families and our whole communities with the love of God. True Christians don't stand outside of churches waving upside down Bibles. True Christians roll up their sleeves and quietly let God love others extravagantly through our prayers, through our reliance on his power and through his grace. And what that will lead it to is people coming into his kingdom through his guidance, wisdom and understanding, not our own. Our job as Christians is very simply to love. To, so let's show the world what true love is all about. Amen. And so we continue our service at the prayers on page four. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, we give you thanks for your great grace and call on our lives. None of us saved ourselves or are worthy of salvation. And it is all through your grace and power. And we give you thanks for this great good news that we have to share with the world. Empower us through your spirit to share that good news through actions of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a world that is divided. We pray for a world that is struggling under a 
virus that is causing much pain, suffering, economic hardship. We pray, Lord, that you would silence the voices of those who are liars and who would use the situation for their own gain. We pray that truth will win out and that people will not believe the lies of those who are trying to sell easy cures. We pray, Lord, as we continue to come out of lockdown, that you would make sure that it isn't a fast removal of the lockdown regulations, but something that is safe as we continue to fight against this virus. Protect those who are infected with it this day and keep all those who we love safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for these parishes, particularly St. Thomas, St. Oswald, St. Mary and St. Peter, and St. Chad. We pray for all the people who live in this group of the Annunciation, and ask, Lord, that you would bless them, that even if they have never thought of you, if they have never shown any interest in, in coming to know you, Lord, that you would just simply bless them anyway and that you would help us be the good news to them and be people who reach out for the need of others. And we pray, Lord, for all the volunteers in our city, who those who are helping with food banks, with delivering food, with walking dogs, and helping those who are still shielding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for our brothers and sisters of the faith across the city and across the world, particularly for those in the US who are struggling with a president who makes light of a faith that is so important. We pray, Lord, that Christian unity will continue to develop. We pray particularly for the, the church in Africa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who pay the ultimate price for their faith. We pray for martyrs, for those who struggle to understand why they're being persecuted. We pray, Lord, that you would stay the hand of the violent and that you would keep Christians from retaliating in hate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and ill. We pray particularly for those suffering with coronavirus. And at this time, particularly for the country of Brazil, seeing a huge rise in deaths. We give thanks for the key workers, for those in the supermarkets, the doctors, surgeries, the hospitals, who are keeping everyone safe and fed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, particularly for those whom we are in a, unable to see due to restrictions. We give thanks that people have been able to meet in gardens or outside and see loved ones. We pray for an appropriate time to, re, um, to relax the restrictions even further so people can hug their grandchildren, their children, their mums, their, their dads, their grandparents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we simply bring ourselves before you, Lord, and just offer our own prayers and petitions to the God who loves us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we say the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with our household and with all those whom we miss. So peace be with you from, from me in Sunderland. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Great God, you are the one God, and you bring together what is scattered and mend what is broken. Unite us with the scattered peoples of the earth, that we may be one family of your children. Bind up all our wounds and heal us in spirit, that we may be renewed as disciples of Jesus Christ, our Master and Saviour. Amen. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, that concludes our new service. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope the new liturgy was okay. Do let me know in the comments below if you think anything we need to change. Um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Over here will appear some buttons. There is a series of sermons. Um, and um, services, do click on that, do have a look. Down here, there's a button to subscribe to the channel. It will send you um, a reminder that a new uh, service has been uploaded. I'll be praying for you. Please pray for me, um, and uh, I hope you'll pray for this whole community. God bless you, and see you next week.